Hello, everyone. Today, I want to show you all of the new features in PHP Monitor version 5. Version 5 is a big upgrade over version 4 with many improvements, the first of which is a reorganized menu here. Let me show you the menu real quick. Everything is the same as it used to be, except a few items have shifted and a few items have been added. Most notably, this is the services item here where you can see whether your services are correctly running or not. If things aren't running, then there'll be red crosses here. In fact, let me show you. There's a new first aid and services menu item where all of the services functionality has been moved to. And if we turn off all of our services, you'll see the truck icon. The truck icon executes the operation. And when we open the menu again, you'll see that, oh boy, our items here are broken, or, well, I should say, our services aren't running. If you see this, you know you can go to First Aid and Services and hit Restart All Services. That should usually fix the issue. And sure enough, they're all up and running again. Easy, right? If unfortunately, Brew's services list looks like this, and you're having a bunch of other issues, the easiest fix is usually to go into first date and services and to select force load latest PHP version. This will forcibly reload PHP and ensure you're running the latest version. From that point on, you can just use the switcher to switch to the right version. Take a look. It's switching, we'll get our alert with a recommendation to say, use valet install if we're getting a bad gateway issue. All right. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, you had to give it a little bit of a moment, but sure enough, here's our PHP 8.1. And again, from this point on, we can switch back to 7.4, but let me show you those services are fixed. And sure enough, we're only running the latest version of PHP. Let's switch back to 7.4. Please note that there's no notifications right now because I'm recording. Run it again, and we're on 7.4. Again, confirm, 7.4, let's go back to 8.1. And we're back on 8.1. Easy, right? You know what would be easier? If we could invoke Alfred to make this happen. And sure enough, we can. Let me show you. If we have allow third-party integration selected in the preferences menu in PHP Monitor, we should be able to use this, Alfred. We can easily switch to a specific version by entering it here and PHP Monitor will listen for these commands to happen. Back to 8.1. If you're coding, and you're just using your keyboard, this can be really helpful. No need to pick up your mouse to get these things done. If you've been using PHP Monitor since version 4.1, you know that there's this thing called the linked and parked domains list. Opening it up shows you this. It's basically a list of linked and parked domains. What's cool about this is that now you can also see which version of PHP is required for a particular website. What happens is, check it out. PHP Monitor scans your composer file and checks it. If the platform is set, then it'll extract the version from there. And if it's set as a require, it'll fetch it as a requirement. The platform is the preferred option. So if you have the platform said it's able to get a specific version like 8.1 in the case of my own website. But for this other website for a family member, I didn't specify the platform version. In that case, we're checking the require object in the composer.json file. And we have determined that we need version 8.0 with a caret here. This is a specific syntax that is interpreted by PHP Monitor and will also allow PHP Monitor to suggest what version to switch to. So in this case, since we're requiring 8.0 or any minor version of that, 
it's going to suggest switching to 8.0. Not needed right now, but it's helpful. Actually, let's switch and see what happens. When we switch, you'll note that this list gets immediately reloaded. It was lightning fast, you could barely see the spinner appear. But what you do notice is that the two check marks that were here before have disappeared. These check marks indicated that the sites were compatible with the current version that we're running. And since that's no longer the case, let's switch back to the version that they require by clicking on the button and then selecting the version we want to switch to. Easy. Okay, what else? Well, there's this plus button and I'm gonna show you what that does. So this plus button allows us to quickly add a new site to this list. We'll link a folder basically. To do that, we'll need to select the folder. So let's go for Concord here. It's a Laravel project I made. Let's hit open. And then we'll get a little nice window here that gives us a bunch of options. Let's start with this one. What do we want the name of this domain to be? And we can see what it's going to look like. Well, I want it to be Concord app or Concord app. Um, yeah, and I'd also like to secure it. Thank you very much. We'll click it. It'll get created and we'll need to enter our password. Boom. That's how easy it is to set this up and it's secured right away. One cool feature is that you can right click on any of these and then open the project with like one of your favorite apps. For example, Visual Studio Code. Here's Concord. Easy, right? So here's another cool feature. In PHP Monitor, we can see what our memory limits are. This is one of the changes that happens in the INI file. So I've actually found this file here. And whenever we change one of these, in the past, you had to refresh PHP Monitor to pick up these new values. Now, if you change them and you save the file, that change is picked up instantly. This also applies to whether plugins are active or not. So if we disable xDebug, it can be disabled or enabled through the file and it's instantly picked up as well. Again, if you change it here, this is what it looks like and this is what happens. All right, let's put our memory limit back to 512. And that's it. Finally, let me show you the new composer feature. It was really easy to find where the global composer file was located, but what's even easier now is to update those dependencies. There's a button here that will just run composer global update for you. That easy. But you might find that this is a thing you do frequently after switching versions. So in preferences, I've added a new preference that allows you to do this automatically whenever you change versions. This will then run that composer update process after that switch is completed. That's how simple it is. So if I'm going back to 7.4, we can go back to 7.4 and have PHP Monitor automatically update my packages and choose the appropriate version for this version of PHP. Super convenient and super easy. Boom. Again, this is an optional feature and you do need to enable this. All right, that's it for all the features in PHP Monitor 5.0. I hope you enjoy it. And remember, if you find this application helpful or useful, PHP Monitor is a free and open source tool, but I do accept donations. There's a link in the description if you would like to contribute a little bit. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy the app. Bye.